Anyway, they dropped a new Elon Musk. So my window is cracked because it's hot in this room. Yes, it's cold outside. Thermodynamic equilibrium is what's happening here. <laughs> Hopefully you can't hear the outside noise. If it gets loud out there, I'll close it. Hi, my name is Beck and welcome back to If I Have to Know About This, So Do You, the show where I talk about things that I don't like. Fun fact about me, I'm pretty into architecture. Like I build stuff in The Sims, but I've never attempted to build a real thing in real life and then make real human beings live in it because I understand that just because I have a good sense of aesthetic for architecture, that doesn't mean I'm qualified to make a residence that is fit for human habitation. That said, this particular building scares me, not just because like it is very scary and imposing looking, not just because I'm claustrophobic, but because I think it has implications about where we as a society are going that I do not like. I've seen this thing on TikTok, Twitter, and Tumblr, and on YouTube, uh, Amanda Swell, or that's not her name, Amanda from Swell Entertainment talked about it. Um, I'll link to her video if you wanna watch that. But yeah, that's every social media I use. Even on Facebook, I've heard that they're talking about it on Facebook. <laughs> so yeah, this is has been a widespread discussion. I do think I've missed the window of relevance to be talking about this, but you know what? I'm still gonna talk about it because I find it interesting. College dorms, they're never luxurious. Even like the luxury dorms are kind of shitty. They're always just gonna be kind of shitty and small and cramped and that's just how it is. And there's also not enough of them. See, Purdue is doing this really cute thing where they knowingly enroll way more students than they have the resources to support. As in like, more students than they can physically fit on campus. So yeah, when I left Purdue, there were so many students in like temporary housing. Purdue was like offering to like help people pay their rent if they would move off campus. Apparently, University of California in Santa Barbara is also facing that problem. That they, they made the problem for themselves, but they're facing it. They're starting to get some serious backlash from students and parents over this, um, even like the local city and stuff are starting to put serious pressure on them to like, hey, do something. You need to like find somewhere to put your students. <laughs> Luckily for them, billionaire Charles Munger has come to the rescue. He is donating $200 million to build a new mega dorm or some have been calling it dormzilla to solve their housing issue. The catch is that nobody can criticize or change his design. He wants to design it himself with no help from a real architect. He wants to be a big boy. Nobody can make any changes for the sake of like functionality or safety. Like I get it if you'd wanna like, I wanna control the aesthetic. I wanna control how it looks, but no, he wants to control everything. Nobody gets to change it to make it safer or more functional or to treat the students who are going to live there like human beings. So fun fact, when I Googled <laughs> Charles Munger, the the first auto fill in thing that Google suggested was Charles Munger IQ, which I think says something about how well received his plan is. IQ is a bullshit scam, but that does say something about how his public image is right now. He's not an architect, he's a real estate lawyer and investor. Yeah, to that, you'd have to know something about like real estate and buildings and stuff. But also, no you don't actually. A real estate investor is you just buy a building and then you pay other people to do the work for you. Like, so yeah, I'm not a fan of this guy, don't like him. <laughs> don't like this building, it is scary to me. Yeah, the plan is for it to take up, you know, an entire city block and house over 4,500 students. Wild. What the fuck? This is what the ground floor looks like. There's a lot to talk about here. So like there's normal stuff that you would expect to see in like a residential dorm building, you know, like the mail room. There's gonna be a bakery, which is nice to have. A lot of the dorms at Purdue when I went there had, you know, the dorms up in the upper levels, but then on the ground floor they had 
you know, something else there. Like one of them had like a grill where they might have like a dining hall. Surfboard storage, of course, because we're in California, I guess. It just uh, looks so like labyrinthy. Like this is a labyrinth. Oh my God. Pets. What is the pets room? What is that? I have questions about this pets room. If your plan is to like have pets of residents, that doesn't look big enough. What, what is that room? What is it? Charles, what the fuck is a pets room? Uh, a theater, of course, cause you need that. The market, um, so apparently this building is gonna have a full size Costco in it because Charlie Munger is, a director for Costco. So a whole ass grocery store, I guess. We will get to why there are so many like extraneous facilities in this building. We'll get to that. We will get there. Um, you know, there's computer labs and stuff. I don't have an issue with the fact that there's a lot of student resources in this building. It does make me wonder um, if it's really necessary that they have more <laughs> surfboard storage than, you know, computer lab room. How many surfboards do you need to be storing? I mean, I guess like if you're being careful, covering all your bases, you wanna make sure you have a surfboard slot for every single resident. But there's no fucking way every single resident has a surfboard that they need to store. Like this is, that's, that's weird. I find that strange. Are you from California? Do you own a surfboard? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a landlubber and I don't get it. So this is the floor plan for each of the eight residential floors in the building. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> just looking at this thing is setting off my claustrophobia. If you're having trouble um, discerning what exactly you were just looking at, that's totally understandable. I, I have trouble with it too. So let's like, break it down a bit. Okay, so there's gonna be eight residential floors, right? And each floor is split up into eight houses. So that are like, you know, the main corridor, eight houses, right? Each house is gonna be a corridor aligned with eight pods or suites, each of which have eight bedrooms. I guess Charlie liked the whole eight, eight, eight thing, but you know, usually the dorm suite setup there's a reason they go with fewer people per suite um, because it works better. That way you can have like one bathroom and everyone can share the bathroom if it's like only three or four people per suite. But no, each suite has eight bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchenette and a small common area. Um, and most of them don't have windows anywhere in the suite. 94, I think, percent of the bedrooms have no windows, which is the main point of contention I think a lot of people have with this building. Oh yeah, and then each house has a great room on the edge, which is where the windows are. <laughs> and that's like the sort of studying and recreation area. There's gonna be a big kitchen there that you share with the 64 other people in your house. I actually tried to build this in The Sims and <laughs> I shit you not, I could only fit one of each of those houses on the largest residential lot in the game, the, a 64 by 64 lot. It's not just the largest residential lot, that's the largest of any lot you can make. Okay, so here we are in the game. Here's like the, the open space of the suite, okay? And then here we have Malcolm Landgrab, average size teenager in one of the bedrooms. Note how fisheye my lens is right now. Um, all right, cool. You got, you got a good look. Okay. Now let me scroll out. So here is the whole suite. Okay. And then this is the whole house. Where even is my, there he is. Okay. Here's the suite. Okay. And this is the house. And then there's going to be eight more of these on a floor. Hope that helps you uh, with the scale, you know, with visualizing stuff. And I could only fit the suites. I couldn't fit the great room on the lot. So yeah, fucked up. <laughs> so the thing about architecture is like, 
there are certain conventions that architects tend to follow and those exist for a reason. They're not just being sheeple, like blindly following each other. There's a reason that building things this way just works better. <laughs> and the same goes for having a window in every bedroom, not like having a window in your living space where you can see the outside, like the world that exists outside of your space is important for your mental health, in including natural light. Um, natural light, being able to see outside is important for your brain to function. Like to me, this honestly looks more like one of the vaults in Fallout. <laughs> they're, they're just packed in there. Apparently this is fine because the need for sunlight and oxygen will coax students out into the gray room to socialize. Thanks, Boomer. Thank you for that, Boomer. That is a fucking Boomer ass thing to say. I'm just, oh my God. They're also defending the design by saying that the single bedrooms are better for social distancing. So like, which is it? Do you want people to come out and socialize or stay in their rooms and not spread the plague? Which one is it? Like those things contradict each other. Look, I'm a pretty introverted person. I. I'm not good at getting out and interacting with people. I have some self-isolating tendencies. As someone who this design seems to be targeting specifically, let me tell you what I think I would end up doing if I lived there. I would simply never leave my room. Like, first of all, I'm sharing an immediate living space with eight people. I would rather share a room with one roommate than share a suite with eight suite mates, to be quite frank. I self-isolate when I'm in a bad place. Not being able to see the sun does not put me in a better place. I self-isolate when I'm in a bad place because the worse of a mental state I'm in, the harder it is for me to like go outside and be around people. And if I have permanent seasonal depression because I don't have a window in my bedroom, that's not gonna make me in a better place to go out and interact with people. So I would end up simply never leaving my room, which would be terrible for me. Looking like at what he said, sharing a bedroom seems to be a sticking point for Charlie. He seems to really hate the idea. You have to share your suite with eight people, right? So like he hates the idea of having a roommate. So this way nobody has a roommate, but they have eight suite mates, which sounds worse than having one roommate. If you ask me, I've had roommates before. I think it's fine. It's arguably even better for my social isolating tendencies because there's someone where I live. Like I have to interact with them, at least a little. God, he's convinced he's this kind of revolutionary rebel thing, the bad boy of architecture. Like there's a reason nobody's done this before. He is confident that students would prefer their own bedroom to a window. Did he ask, did he like do a poll or something? Also, I think that's the kind of thing that's easier to say before you're in the situation. Like it's, I think it's very possible. A lot of people are saying, oh yeah, I'd rather have a, my own bedroom and no window before. And then they get into that situation and be like, oh, actually this is terrible. Or even they may not even like notice the ways that it's affecting them because, you know, it's a subtle effect that like gradually increases over time so you don't necessarily notice it. Now supposedly this is okay because each bedroom that doesn't have a window comes equipped with a little light box false window thing inspired by, I shit you not, Disney cruise ships. Disney fucking cruise ships. Oh my god. I. It, it's the uh, completely dystopian concept with fucking Disney slapped on it for me. Oh my God, I hate Disney so much. I I hate the Walt Disney Corporation too much for words. In fact, he seems to have taken a lot of inspiration from the Rat Corpse Cruise Line because he describes his architecture as like a ship on land. Okay, you know why uh, land architecture and ship architecture is different? It's because one of them's on fucking land. Like I, I don't want ship architecture on land. I hate boats. That's what's up with all this like self-sufficiency bullshit. That's why we have to have like a computer lab and classrooms and a grocery store. When you're on a ship, you have to have like all those things like a med bay and a coroner office. <laughs> 
because you're on a boat, you can't leave because you're in the middle of the fucking ocean. You know what a college campus is not? The middle of the ocean, fucking rat corp ships, the rat ships. <sighs> He's like obsessed with the idea that it is self-sustaining. It is everything you need in one building. Buddy, I'm okay with having to go outside sometimes in order to get like groceries and stuff. Also like, this is dorms. People living in dorms don't really cook for themselves. They usually have a dining plan and eat in a dining hall. Could have put a dining hall in that spot, but I guess Charlie doesn't have, you know, major stakes in a chain of university dining halls to put in there. So you gotta go with Costco. I don't need everything to be in this building. I can leave. I hope I can leave. Can you imagine like they get everyone moved in and then Charlie locks the doors. <laughs> Stay with Charlie. You wanna be my special friend? Do you wanna be friends forever? Charlie will provide. Charlie has everything you could possibly need. Don't leave Charlie. Charlie loves you. <laughs> You'll be safe with Charlie. I also have some questions about how they plan on assembling the building. It looks like they have what they call like the pod technique of construction where they construct each individual house off-site. Quick refresher, these houses are the things that I couldn't fit on the largest lot type in The Sims. Can you do that? Is that a thing? Like, I mean, one thing to like assemble them separately and stack them on top of each other, but they're assembled like off-site at a different location. How do you, how are you going to get it to the, I don't think you can just drive down the street with this fucking thing. Can you? Is this more efficient or whatever than like just building it all at once? If anybody like knows about construction, can, can you explain it in the comments? I don't understand why they would do this. Dennis McFadden of the UCSB Architectural Review Board actually resigned out of protest and that was the big thing that got like attention on the building. He called it a whew, social and psychological experiment with an unknown impact on the lives and personal development of the undergraduates the university serves. And yeah, don't that just say it all. You know the worst fucking part is it's gonna cost like 10 grand a year to live here. Jesus Christ. That's the real kicker. <laughs> that and the Rat Corp part. This design is proposed as complete. No review is needed, no changes. It just, they're like, yep, this is what we're going with. According to McFadden, he's like, no, this is like so experimental. We need to be like reviewing it and doing research and like planning this out. We need to like take some time to actually think about this because this is like a very experimental thing. But no, they're just going with it. And he resigned because the project is unsupportable from my perspective as an architect, a parent, and a human being. Thank you, King. And he has supposedly received support for this decision from prominent architects all around the world. So he's not the only one taking an issue with it. However, in an interview with Architectural Record, Charlie Munger has called him a fucking idiot who like just had his gut reaction and didn't actually look at the plans for the building. And McFadden, well, at this point, everybody's seen the plans for the building, but like McFadden is like, no, I see it. I understand the plan. That's why I have the problem with it. Like when people are like convinced that you're just not on the same page, as them and they're like, no, 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 you don't understand how this works. I'm like, no, I, I get how it works. That's my problem. And what makes it worse is that he also has been saying that UCSB is a large enough organization with enough money and sway that like state building codes and stuff aren't going to be much of an obstacle when it comes to building this. Cause like, you know, California, they have fires all the time. They got earthquakes all the time. You need to be able to evacuate a building. Apparently the university has enough money to disregard that, I guess. Let's talk a little more about this interview with the architectural record. First of all, he made a point about how he has lots of windows in his home, which he designed. I don't think anybody doubted that you were capable of designing a building with windows. They were angry that you weren't doing that. Like we know you can do it. The problem is that you're choosing not to. If you really wanted to defend this project, 
You should be living in a house with no windows. We took the penthouse space, which everybody wants, which is twice as valuable as ordinary space, and gave it to the students. Penthouses usually have windows. Am I missing something? Do I not? Is there something I don't know about penthouses? I do not see how this is at all comparable to a penthouse apartment. In a recent letter to the shareholders of his company, he wrote, the worst attributes of bureaucracy should much more often be treated like the cancers they so much resemble. Go fuck yourself, oh my God. Oh my God, fuck you. Those regulations are written in blood. Do you know why those regulations exist? Because before, people fucking died. Those regulations are there to stop you from killing people. Literally, if any billionaire is ever complaining about bureaucracy, what they're really saying is that I just wanna do whatever I want Damn the risk to the lives of other people. The tape is red because it's drenched in blood. Fuck you. And again, about the hating to share a space with unrelated strangers. Okay, so the typical dorm setup is like you have a room with one unrelated stranger. Is that worse than sharing your space with eight or seven? unrelated strangers. And then like, weren't you saying that a perk of your plan was that it would force people to go out and share their space with 64 unrelated strangers? Is that better, Charlie? There's no consistency here. Like I've had roommates, it's fine. Like that is one thing he keeps talking about that just screams whiny rich brat. He thinks the worst thing that could possibly happen to a person is having to share your room. Oh no, it's fucking fine. Most people would prefer to have their own room, but it's okay to share a room. God. Oh, another thing, he said that the dorms being co-ed would greatly improve the behavior of males. His word choice, not mine. <laughs> What the fuck does that mean, Charlie? What the fuck does that mean? You could have just said it's co-ed and people would have been like, oh yeah, co-ed housing, that's a thing. Co-ed housing exists already. You don't need to justify it. It's just a thing that people are already accustomed to. He's trying to make this like completely normal thing and act like he's a fucking genius for discovering it. When in fact, boys and girls have shared living spaces for fucking ever. They always have. That's always been a thing. I don't understand how it like is gonna improve anyone's behavior. I, you wanna explain what the fuck you mean by that, Charlie? You wanna elaborate, maybe? He also said that he thinks it's bad for donors to be able to choose the architects who build the building because then they look like shit. No fucking self-awareness here, huh? He thinks he's the exception because he's just so special because he likes architecture and he's just so special. Just, just the specialist boy ever. He's the fucking main character. And this is why he reminds me of Elon Musk because he's convinced he's like this goddamn super genius, mega, mega genius superhero who's gonna like save the world by being smart. And how would I, how, how could I be a billionaire if I'm not a mega super genius? and good at every fucking thing. Like, oh my God, donors shouldn't get to choose architects, but I, a donor who's not even an architect should get to design the building because I'm just the specialist boy in the whole fucking world. Fuck you, Charlie, fuck you. Like he's not even ashamed of being a blatant hypocrite, Jesus Christ. Isn't that how all rich people are? They all just think they're the protagonist of the planet earth and they just do whatever. That's why we're having a billionaire space race. At least he's not building more rocket ships because we don't need more rocket ships. We don't need more fucking rocket ships. We don't need more fucking rocket ships. We need oxygen <laughs> and an atmosphere <laughs> and a livable climate. So apparently Charlie was inspired by the Unité d'Habitation in France. And like, okay, he claimed to have perfected the design. He's like, I, I took the design and I perfected it. And so what he says is he took that design and perfected it, which like, okay, so from what I could find, the biggest thing that people don't like about Habitation is the fact that some bedrooms were very small and didn't have windows. Is that your idea of perfecting something? Taking the main thing that people had an issue with about it and then just turning that into the entire building? 
I have a window in this room. And I like tend to keep the blinds drawn. I've been keeping the blinds drawn lately. So like the natural light is still getting into my room, like with the circadian rhythm and everything. But because the blinds have been drawn, I'm not seeing outside. And even that alone has been like negatively affecting me. I noticed like that having the natural light, but not being able to see outside has been negatively affecting me. It's not just about the sunlight. In this interview, he also talked about the fake windows. So remember how the defense was that we'd have the fake windows that mimic natural sunlight? And they were saying like they would be programmed to perfectly mimic what the sun is actually doing outside. The sun will rise and set and you'll get the perfectly realistic natural light. Well, well, in this fucking interview, Charlie, fucking Charlie said, programming the lights was too expensive. It was too expensive to do that. So we're just gonna give them a knob and they can like set the lighting to whatever they want. You're not even doing the, th the fucking thing. What happened to not changing your plans? Just give them another million dollars to do that. Like that, just save money on the surfboard storage. Oh my God, I don't know. Like, <laughs> so we'll give the students knobs and they can have whatever light they want. Real windows don't do that. Yeah, but every fucking lighting fixture does that. You just reinvented electric lights. You fucking moron. You fucking overinflated fucking egotist. Oh my God. I, oh my God. This guy really is just convinced that God shat him out with like fucking rainbows and shit. I don't know. So, uh, I really don't like this. This makes me angry. The core of what's happening here is that some rich guy with fuck off money has decided that he wants to play architect and he wants to use his immense wealth to more or less force everybody around him to play along, including young students who don't have anywhere else to live. If you wanna play architect, play The Sims. Like, that's what I do. This is how all rich people are really. They get to just play, role play, whoever the fuck they decide they wanna be on a given day and force everyone else to play along. That's why Elon Musk is the way that he is, because he gets to play Iron Man all day, every day. And because he has so much fucking money, he gets to make everybody else play along with him. That really is all this is at the end of the day, is rich people playing pretend. And I don't think anybody should be able to do that. I don't like living in a world where there are some people who can just do whatever the fuck they want. Damn the consequences for anybody else. They can just do whatever. I hate that. I don't like it because this really is just a microcosm of life under capitalism. I know I make everything about how capitalism bad, but capitalism bad because we have to live in fucking situations like this where we are forced to succumb to whatever random ass whims strikes some fuck off rich guy. And we just have to live with that. We are forced to just play along with whatever fucking self-aggrandizing role-play game they want to play. But like, it's not a game for us. It's our real fucking lives. Oh yeah, I watched Squid Game recently. <laughs> that may have affected my interpretation of this building. So yeah, there's two petitions I found. One of them is just like by some concerned citizen and another one is by six of the architects at the school. So I'll put those below so you can click on them if you want. You don't need to be a UCSB student to sign them. I signed them both. Yeah, I think that's about all I have to say on this. Squid Game was really good, by the way. You should go watch it now before they ruin it with a second season. I fucking, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is gonna want a cameo in the second season, isn't he? He's gonna like buy himself a cameo. Just mark my words. That's my prediction for season two of Squid Game. So go watch it now before they ruin it with a second season. Okay, bye. Oh yeah, you can also like and subscribe to the video. If you want. Or don't. I'm not the boss of you.